Hi, I'm Bridget Wagner, a graduate student in Stuart Schreiber's lab. In this short movie, I'll explain what diversity-oriented synthesis is, how it works, and what we use it for. The purpose of diversity-oriented synthesis is to create a large number of very diverse molecules. We start with some simple building block molecules, standard lab chemicals like benzene and ethanol, as well as other, more complicated molecules. We can then use chemical reactions to join these building blocks together in different ways. We try to use reactions that will increase the complexity of the molecular structure. One technique we use to generate diversity is called split and pool synthesis. We first chemically attach many building block molecules to small polystyrene beads. These are then divided into a number of tubes. Then we add a new building block molecule to each tube. We pull the results together and split them again to new tubes. New building blocks are added, and so on. Since all the molecules attached to an individual bead will have the same chemical structure, we can just separate individual beads to separate the molecules. Now we need to identify what molecule is attached to each bead. Along with the building blocks, we attach a unique marker molecule to the beads for every split and pull reaction we do. When we run the marker molecules through a gas chromatograph, we get a set of peaks that translates into a binary number. This number acts as an ID code. It tells us the building blocks and reactions used to make up a particular small molecule. When we want to run experiments with these small molecules, we chemically remove them from the beads they're attached to. We then put them into solution and array them in a plate. Each well has a solution containing only one type of small molecule. Each new molecule we create adds to the library of small molecules we're building. To test the small molecules in the library and see how they affect cells, First, we set up an array of cultured cells in these weld plates. We use a robotic arm to precisely measure and transfer the small molecules from the plate we made earlier to our new plate of cultured cells. We can then perform tests or screens on these cells to see if the small molecules have affected them in specific ways. For instance, we can look for small molecules that cause the cells to stop dividing, that cause a particular protein to become modified, or that cause the cells to take up a specific nutrient. The robotic arm helps us screen many plates very quickly. We also screen for how our molecules affect whole organisms. We use the zebrafish embryo for that purpose. Because the embryo is transparent during development, we can look at its organs under a microscope. For instance, we can screen embryos for defects in heart, eye, or pigment development. We also test how our small molecules bind to proteins. In this case, we set up what's called a microarray of small molecules. Tiny spots of each small molecule in our library are placed on a glass slide. Thousands of these spots are chemically bound to a single slide. We make about 100 copies of each slide at a time. We then expose each slide to a particular protein. The protein has a fluorescent tag attached to it. If a small molecule binds to a protein, the spot corresponding to that small molecule lights up. We can use fluorescent imaging and see which spots can bind to a protein and which can't. These data are automatically entered into a computer database for further analysis. 
By using diversity-oriented synthesis in combination with multiple parallel experiments, we're building a huge set of data. This will make it easier and faster to find useful new compounds with important biological effects.